All right, hey everybody, Joe from MTX Audio. A lot of people think that subwoofers have to be complex and, and difficult and that you need to have a lot of understanding of your car in order to get stuff installed. And while there is some truth to that, especially in bigger applications, for the majority of people, adding a subwoofer doesn't have to be something that's too super complex. Something as easy as an eight inch subwoofer with a built-in amplifier, the RT8PT, can make a world of difference in the sound quality that you get from your vehicle. So today we're gonna to walk through the steps and show you how to install this guy so you can start enjoying uh, the low frequencies from your music and the bass that you've been missing in a pretty short amount of time. So stick around and we'll show you how to get it done. All right, so the first step before we get started with any installation is gonna to be to disconnect the negative battery terminal on our battery so that we can avoid any electrical problems. We don't want to get hurt and we don't want anybody to get hurt. So we're just gonna go ahead and loosen this up. And slip that right off, we'll hang it off to the side. So we're also gonna to wanna to take the positive terminal, we're gonna to wanna to loosen that up because we are gonna to have to run a power wire from the battery to the amplifier that's built into the enclosure. So while I'm here, I'm also gonna undo this positive wire. Just loosen it up slightly. And take this nut off because this is where we are going to install the power cable. So we'll get that done and then we'll move on to step two. Okay, so we're using a uh, Streetwire ZN3 amplifier kit here, which is gonna be an eight gauge power and an eight gauge ground wire. So what we're gonna do while we're up here is we're gonna attach the ring terminal that comes on the power cable to the screw that we just loosened. And then we are going to put the screw back on and tighten it back up so that this is secure. All right, so now we're gonna install the fuse holder. I've installed the fuse already internally. What we're gonna do now is put these end cap covers on top of our wire. We are then going to insert one end of the wire into the fuse holder. If we have to twist this down to make sure it all stays together, it's no problem. Wire goes in. We're gonna use our Allen wrench to tighten this down. Once it's tight, we're gonna move our cover back up, screw that back on, and our fuse is now ready. So when we're ready to install this and get it all zip tied and secured, with the under, other end of our wire, we'll be able to come in and go right into that and we'll be ready to turn it on. All right, so as you can see, my spool of power wire is in here in the uh, driver's side footwell. What we're gonna do is make sure it's out of the way of all the pedals. As you can see, I've already taken off our plastic coverings that are gonna go along our seat because this is the channel that we're gonna wanna run our power wire through so that we don't have to worry about somebody stepping on it. So we're gonna put it into a groove just like this. So once I get it situated behind the pedals, I'm gonna run it through this door through the passenger door and up into the back where we're going to wind up installing the amplifier. So let me do that right now. It's helpful to have some zip ties handy in case you need to keep that power wire out of the way. Uh, pieces of the car, big wire harnesses, other things like that can be used to zip tie that power wire too in order to keep it out of the way. So as you can see the power wire is now running along the door frame from the front seat to this passenger seat. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this power wire, put it in along the frame in the same place to the back of the car where the enclosure is gonna be set up. Now I'm not going to put the plastic cover that covers this door frame back in yet because you are going to need to run a ground wire from the amplifier to the chassis of the car. Now because of the way this car is built, our chassis point is gonna be right down here where the frame is. So I'm gonna leave that off so I don't have to do the work twice. So we'll come back to that once we get the ground installed, we'll be able to re-put that piece back in and the car will be finished. In the meantime, I'm gonna get the rest of this wire to the back where the amplifier is gonna be. <clears throat> so as you can see, we have a lot of extra power wire that we're not gonna use. Our amplifier is going to be installed right here, so we don't need this huge length of it. Using our Allen wrench, we can loosen up our connector and then get an idea of how much power wire we're gonna need. I always like to give a little bit extra. So 12 volt positive is gonna be this one on the left. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this. And then I'm going to take the jacket off. And then I'm going to twist our wire. I'm going to put it into the 12 volt positive. I'm gonna take our Allen wrench and I'm going to secure the power wire within the terminal block. 
All right, so we've now got our positive power connected. We still need to get our ground connection connected as well as our um, signal from our source unit, which is going to be these RCAs in our case, uh, as well as a remote wire, which we're also going to have to run. So next step we're going to do is the ground connection, which we talked about earlier. We're actually going to screw into the body of the vehicle right there. When you do your ground connection, make sure that you sand away all the paint. It's very important that you are actually getting a connection to the physical chassis of the vehicle and that there is no paint or other debris on top of where you're going to be attaching that ground wire. You want it to be as clean and free of debris as possible in order to get the best connection in order to avoid any fire hazards down the road. So we're going to go ahead and do that next. All right, so we talked about making sure that this is clean and that it's sanded. So we're going to clean first. Get in there with the slightly damp rag. Just get rid of any dirt or other debris that's on there. Okay, that looks pretty good. You also want to make sure that you are not going to drill into a gas tank or something else important. So please, before you drill, look before you drill so that you're not going to hurt anything that's important to the car. We should be clear. I'm going to grab some sandpaper and we're going to get down there and start sanding. We are now going to drill our ground wire using the uh, ring terminal on the end and we are going to drill that into this spot that we have just cleared. Alright, as you can see, we can't see any wires, life is good, everything's hooked up properly. Move on to the next step, which is going to be getting signal from the source unit back to the amplifier. Alright, so we've got our power and our ground wire run. Now we've got to worry about signal and remote turn on. The head unit that we're using actually has RCA outputs, which is the preferred method of connecting your amplifier. So we've already connected our two-channel interconnect to that. Additionally to the radio, we have attached our remote wire. Both of these come in the ZN3 amplifier kit with the interconnect. The subwoofer also comes with an external bass control. So this RJ45 phone connector, we've got stationed up in this little pocket where we're gonna mount the EBC, but we have to run it back to the amplifier as well. You don't wanna run RCAs, remote, and your EBC on the same side of the car as you did your power and ground because you can get some interference from that power wire. So we're gonna run these along the passenger side in the same way. So they're coming down from the dashboard. We're gonna wire them up and then bring them through this channel. Once we get them all the way to the back, we're gonna put the trim pieces back on and you won't even know they're there. So we're gonna go ahead and do that right now as the next step. All right, so now we've got everything run. We're ready to connect everything. So we've already got our positive connected. We're now gonna put our ground in. Remember our battery is still disconnected from the negative and we have not attached the fuse for the positive so we're just going to make sure this is nicely wound and we're going to put the ground in the space marked ground then we're going to take our remote wire that we just brought up and that's going to go into the remote input which is going to be the center Then we connect our RCAs that we brought. And we're gonna connect our EBC. Now our EBC is a little bit longer. We'll tuck this back under the seat so it's out of the way here in a second. Pretty easy, pretty simple. All we gotta do is turn the battery back on, connect that fuse, and uh, this thing will be good to go. We'll be ready to rock. So let's, uh, let's do that next. All right, so now we're gonna reconnect our power cable to our fuse holder. I've already put the uh, cap on the end here. So now what we got to do is tie it into this and tighten this down with our Allen wrench. Okay. Then we're going to screw this on and we're going to mount this in a minute, but to make sure everything's working, we're going to reattach our negative and we're going to tighten that down. OK, 
Okay. Now before I zip tie anything in the engine compartment, I'm going to attach the EBC, turn it on, make sure the a amp and sub come on and work, and then we'll be ready to go. All right, so the last thing you got to do is test it and make sure it works. Now generally, depending on your head unit, I like to uh, set the gain about halfway on this, listen for distortion, and then adjust it either up or down until I hear distortion, and then back it off a little bit. Same with the low pass filter, depending on what kind of music you like and what kind of music you're listening to will dictate the kind of sound that the sub's going to put out. So now, I don't know about you, but I love me some Shakira, so it really illustrates how well this sub sounds on all kinds of music. It doesn't have to be rap in order to enjoy your bass, whether you're listening to rock, country, Latin, whatever it is, adding a subwoofer, even something as small as this little 8-inch bass tube can make a huge difference on the quality of the music that you listen to. So we went through the install of this. It takes you about an hour if you're not super comfortable. Really the hardest part is getting behind your radio if you're not familiar with how to take your dash apart, but Google can show you anything depending on what kind of car you have. Getting all the uh, connections made and done is pretty simple, pretty easy. Uh, all we've got to do now is secure this to the back with the straps that come with it. Uh, RT8PT, if you've got any questions, check it out online at mtx.com. Call us at 1-800-225-5689 and get yours today. You don't have to be a uh, SPL competitor to get the most out of your music with some bass. Thanks for your time.